What's up guys? So in the last video, what we did was we finished creating the controls for the player. And as you can see now, if you press the up arrow, the ship moves forward. If you press left, he spins left. Right, he spins right. And you can move forward in any direction based off of what direction he's facing. So in this video, what we're going to be working on is adding the bullets to where if the user presses a space bar, then the ship will shoot a bullet out. So in order to do that, what we're going to have to do first is create a class called bullet. So we're just going to go right here under the end of the player class. And what we're going to do is say class bullet. And it's just it's going to be an object. And so we'll start creating that. Now, what we're going to do for this class is create the init function. And we don't really need to pass in any parameters because the player's bullet is always going to be based off of the x and y of the player. And so what we're going to do is say self.point, and that's going to be equal to player.head. It's looking good. And then the bullet's going to have an x and a y, so we'll say self.x is going to equal self.point. Well, we could just do we could do this self dot x comma self dot y is going to be equal to self dot point, and so this does um the first because self dot point is two two numbers and x and a y it's a list, so the first index is going to go to x and the second index will go to y. Next, we're going to create a width and a height, and I think a good size for the bullets is going to be four pixels. So we'll say self dot width is going to be equal to 4 and then self.height we'll set that equal to 4 as well and now what we need to keep track of is the cosine and sine of the player in order to figure out which direction the bullet needs to be shooting at so we're going to create a variable called self.c which is going to stand for cosine and it's going to be set equal to player.cosine and self.s which is going to be equal to player dot sign so those are going to come in handy pretty soon and then we are every bullet's going to have a velocity so we'll say self dot xv is going to be equal to self dot c so the cosine times 10 and then self dot yv is going to be set equal to self dot s times 10. so what this is going to do so a cosine and sine they're each going to be returning numbers depending on what direction the player is facing. So if the, if the player is facing fully forward, then the cosine is going to be zero and the sine will be like one, for example, right? So it's going to shoot really fast facing up. However, if the player turns like, let's say he's facing like, like two o'clock on a, on a clock, right? So it's mostly up, but it's still facing a little bit to the right. And so the, the sine and cosine values are going to be each less than one and when you multiply it they'll each be around like four to five so it kind of just gives it the proper direction to where it goes in the same direction that the player is shooting so so that matches up all right so the next function that we're going to make in here is going to be the move function so we're going to say def move and what we're going to do in here is just simply say self dot x is going to plus equals the self dot x velocity and then self dot y is going to plus equals self dot y velocity. So whenever this is called, it's just going to move the bullet and update its position on the screen. And then the last function that we're going to need in here is going to be the draw function, which is going to display it on the actual window. So we'll say def draw, and we're going to pass in the window pi game dot draw dot rect. We're going to pass in the window and then give it a color. We'll just make it white. 255, 255, 255. And then we're going to give it um, a list of four values similar to earlier. We'll say self.x, self.y, self.width, and then self.height. And so now that's pretty much it for the bullet class. Um, so in order to actually display the bullets, 
or like in order for the player to actually shoot a bullet we're gonna have to detect if the space has been pressed and so there's two ways to do this we can either do what we did earlier where we kind of just make another if statement where we had the check to see if they pressed left right or up the only problem is with this method of key detection if the player holds it holds the key down it keeps updating it right so like for example whenever i ran it earlier and i pressed left it kept spinning it didn't spin once and stop and so if we put another if statement in here then what's going to happen is if i hold space um, that'll shoot a lot of bullets and that's like it, lo it looks cool but we don't want it to do that by default we can make that an upgrade later on in the game what we want is if, like, the user to have to press space every single time he wants to shoot in order for the game just to be a little bit more challenging so instead of checking to see if space has been pressed up here what we're going to have to do is check to see if the space has been pressed inside of this for loop because this will it won't keep it won't keep calling it right so we can just go after that if statement right there and then we'll create a new if statement we'll say if event type so if event dot type is equal to pi game dot key down in all caps then what we're going to do is say if the event key so event dot key is equal to pi game dot k underscore space and if the game is not over so if the user has not lost yet so if not game over that's when we're going to create the new bullet right so let's say pass in there and let's scroll back up to where we created the player because now we need to create a new variable and this is going to be a list containing all of the bullets that are on the screen so what we're going to do for this is we'll just call this like player bullets and we'll set it equal to nothing for now just two square brackets and then so down here we'll take out pass and what we're going to say is player bullets dot append and now is when we create the new bullet we'll just say bullet with two parentheses so whenever the user presses space and the game is still running we're going to add a bullet to the list of player bullets so that is looking good and now what we need to do is go up here to the redraw game window function and we want to display all the bullets in there. So we'll say for um, B in player bullets, we want to call B.draw. Fantastic. And then the last thing we want to do is we can go right here before, if not before all the key detection, and we can just say for B in player bullets, B.x, not B.x, we can just call B.move. And that'll update the positioning so I think that should be working let's run it and see what happens so now I can still move in everything and then if I press space it crashes because life is hard um, we just have to pass in window into that draw call and then now if I press space it shoots backwards um, that's okay so it's so there's obviously some kind of bug in here I'm gonna kind of try to find what the mistake is cuz like right now it should be shooting here towards the mouse which it kind of does but now if I turn it around it should shoot here it shoots down there so I'll kind of see what the problem is and then I will let you guys know what the fix is I found what the problem was basically in these three methods um, right here between self.cosine and self.width divided by 2 there was a plus sign we need to just change that to an asterisk um, to actually multiply it so we had that problem here here and over there so make sure you update update those three so now whenever we run it and we shoot, it'll shoot from the center, depending on where it's facing, and it shoots in the direction that the ship is facing. So you can spin and it'll, it's perfectly working. And, and yeah, I mean, if I hold space, it doesn't keep shooting, which is good to kind of make it a little more challenging. 
If I spam the space bar, it shoots multiple bullets. If I spin and shoot, it shoots in the direction of the ship at the moment that I shot. So that is looking good. And yeah, I mean, that pretty much wraps it up for the player shooting, I guess, next. What we're going to be adding is the asteroids that we want to shoot and also avoid hitting. And yeah, I suppose before we move on to the next step, what we should do is um, get rid of the bullets that are off the screen so that it doesn't take up too much memory. So we can have a check. So let's go into the bullet class right there. And what we're going to do is create another method. We'll call this def check off screen and what this is going to do is it's going to say if the self.x is less than zero we'll do like less than 50 less than negative 50 or self.x is greater than like the screen width or self.y is greater than the screen width height or self dot y is less than negative 50 so those are like the four ways it can be off the screen then if any of those are true we're just going to return true and then so down in the while loop in the same place that we do check or like that we call the move function we're also going to say if b dot check off screen so if this returns true then we are going to take it out of the list so we'll say player bullets dot pop and then we're going to say player bullets dot index of b and so now if it realizes that that bullet is off the screen then it'll take it out of the list and it'll keep it from hogging up too much memory and yeah and then i, I think one more thing we can change for the player motion is there's th we have two options basically so right now so right now the way it's set is if I keep going forward, I'll just get off the screen, which we don't really want. We either want him to come back through the bottom of the screen or just not let him move. I think the better option is if the player goes up through the top, then it'll come back down through the bottom. And if um, if we go like through the side, then it'll come out the other side. So the way we do that is by, just we can go up to the player method or the player class and then Right under move forward, we're just going to create another me method called um, check location. And what we're going to do here is we'll say if self.x is greater than the screen width, like plus 50, then we're going to say self.x is going to equal zero. How if self.x is less than zero? Well, less than zero minus self dot width. Yeah, then we're gonna set the x to. We'll make it like the screen, the screen width. Now I gotta do the y. So l if self dot y is less than like negative 50, then self.y is going to equal to the screen height. L if self.y is greater than the screen height plus like 50, then we're going to say self.y is going to be equal to zero. And so instead of saying check location, we'll just say update location. And then we'll just call this every single while loop of the game. So we can just go right here, if not game over, b.move. So we'll go right there before that for loop and say player.update location. So now let's run it and just make sure that works. So now if I go all the way up, he comes down through the bottom. If I go left, he comes back from the right. If I go right, he comes back there. And if I go through the bottom, then he comes out from the top. So that's looking good. Shooting still works. It shoots in the right direction. So yeah, that's all fully functional. Now we just have to add the actual asteroids and finish all the basics of the game. I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the series. Um, let me know what you guys' thoughts are in the comments. Let me know 
other features you guys want to see added to this game that maybe I haven't had in mind and other tutorial series that you guys would like to see.